Hello, I'm Ronit Gerber. You're watching The Creative Heart Show. And today's episode is coming with a slightly different flavor. You're going to want to stay tuned. You're going to want to stay watching because we're going to have lots of tips for you um, in the next hour or so. I'm joined today in the studio by Ivor Kellogg, who is many different things. You wear many different hats, don't you? You're Absolutely. a social Double media... <laughs> social media guru, business strategist, a mentor, a radio show host, and also a local campaigner. And you've been an ambassador for many different causes and charities over the years, haven't you? Over the you? years, absolutely, yes. Yes, well, I have. Welcome into the studio today. It's lovely to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. What I want to kick start with or kick off with is finding out, Ivo, what are you working on at the moment? Is there any projects or anything that you'd like to oh, wow, tell yeah. us about? All, so all sorts of projects. Um, so uh, I'm looking at, uh, <clears throat> there's, there's a core thread uh, through very much of what I do and that's uh, making an effort to get our local communities more connected. I see that as um, the overall overarching solution to a lot of the problems that we have today. So <clears throat> where do we want to start? Um, time banking, I don't know if you're, uh, I'm, aware of the concept of time banking mm -hmm. that's where somebody will do a piece of work for somebody and they will earn an amount of time and then they can go and spend that amount of time with somebody else so uh, I'm uh, going down to do some training next week and understanding the, the legislation and the compliance issues associated with time banking and I'd like to bring that to St Albans I've got a few people that are getting involved with that mm -hmm. that will be launched uh, with a website it's extremely early days yet but there are some alternative currencies around um, we've been down and talked to the Bristol Pound and uh, like the idea of bringing an alternative currency either to St Albans and Hartmden or possibly to South West Hertfordshire as a whole. Um, <clears throat> uh, working with a number of charities to help raise their profile and this is all about connecting and looking at alternative ways of helping them get their message to market and whether that's fundraising um, bringing volunteers and then supporting the cause, wherever the cause happens to be. Uh, I shall be going down to the Eden Project next weekend, so just over a week's time. That's for four days, uh, training, mentoring, coaching on supporting their big lunch idea. I don't know if you've heard about that. I That's haven't. I know, th I mean, we've been to the Eden Project um, as a family with a group of friends. That's the one in Cornwall. That's it's right, magnificent. yes. magnificent. One yes, of I've my favourite places. I'm really quite excited about the well, whole thing. Well, you're in for a real treat. It's just inspiring. It's beautiful. So they, they started a project a few years ago, which is a charitable foundation um, called The Big Lunch. So one day every year, and it was middle of June uh, this year, 2014, uh, where... <coughs> they get communities at a hyper-local level to put a lunch on and get people to pull together. So uh, I applied for that uh, about a month ago, been accepted, so I'm going down. Uh, really quite excited about what I'm going to get from that. I am going to be meeting lots of like-minded people and most importantly, hoping to come away with some really cool ideas that we can implement. In terms of working level. collaboratively in yeah, community. Exactly. So it's all, right. all about uh, partnering and working collaboratively and helping people re-engage. We are incredibly disconnected um, as a society and, and depending on the numbers that you look at, I think the stats say it's like seven or eight out of 10 people don't know their next door neighbours now. So your whole mission is to kind of bring people together again, reconnect yes, everybody. Uh, absolutely, to get people to reconnect and, and by reconnecting and re-engaging and um, actually just being able to talk to each other, whether that's mm -hmm. online or offline, out of that we can then create solutions. Very, very simple ma mathematical formula or calculation I did with 7 billion people on the planet. If every one of those people has 10 new ideas every day, that's 25 and a half trillion ideas every year. Now, if there's no creativity there, I don't know where there is any creativity, but that isn't really being harnessed, is it? Well, I think the shame of it is that everyone's working in isolation. You've got creative pockets sometimes just individuals and other times communities or pockets. I mean, I think of Brighton when I'm saying this because my, my sister lives there and that is one of the most vibrant, creative, product, creatively productive communities. Yes. But they're working over there. And then you've got other people in all different places, different towns who are working in isolation and you're trying to bring people together. Well, that's what, that's what started me on my journey. So 
when I first started going out officially business networking, which was six, seven years ago now probably, I lose track of time, I was inspired and excited about all these businesses, mainly micro businesses and small businesses, um, that I just wouldn't have known anything about if I hadn't have gone to those meetings and met those people. And they were all uh, exciting, cool people, all bringing ideas to the table and bringing uh, and, and bringing new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And yet, from from the wider perspective, unless you know about these events and you go along and you meet these people, you wouldn't know that any of this was going along at all. And I thought, well, how can this be harnessed for a greater community benefit? So that started me uh, on the journey, if you like. Coupled with that, um, my daughter obviously was six, seven years younger than I was looking for um, <clears throat> what to do locally and 20 odd years ago then you'd go to your local newspaper and you'd be able to easily find events going on because there was nowhere else to really find out what was going on. With the advent of the internet that has all been entirely fragmented and it's actually quite difficult today to find out what's really going on. So um, I've made a couple of attempts over the years of trying to pull that together and failed actually uh, in, in that quest but that's something else that I want to pull into the time banking and the alternative currency and just pulling people together and using different hooks and different uh, <clears throat> routes to those people in a, in a centralised place to give people that opportunity of A, knowing what's going on, finding out what's going on, being able to promote and present what's going on and then being able to share ideas around that. And I suppose social media must play a big part in that. It must have been like a gift for you to realise Abs that there's this vehicle. Very much And so. I wonder if that's part, I mean, you're hugely successful on, on social media. Um, I believe on LinkedIn, you're one of the most, the, one of the top 100 most connected people with what, 30,000? And maybe that's grown since since. Well, that, that's, that's the limit, unfortunately. But, um, you can't go beyond 30,000 there, there was a time. There was a time in the early days LinkedIn didn't put didn't put a ceiling on it, but um, a few years ago they put a ceiling on it at thirty thousand. And there's there's quite a few people on on LinkedIn with thirty thousand or more connections now. That's somebody else's piece of research. They reckon that I was in the top one hundred. Uh, but I guess who, if you're in the say. business of connecting people, if that's part of your inner drive and your inner I love meeting purpose, I love meeting people. You, and you're to activating people. That's what it's your all about. own networks in the best sense because you're doing it on Facebook, on Twitter, presumably. Yes. LinkedIn and everything. I don't use Facebook so much actually. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. It is, I just don't like the platform. I use, obviously I, I, I use Facebook. Um, I prefer LinkedIn and uh, I, I quite like Twitter and I'm. Get more and more into YouTube actually, and that's where we're going to be going out with this, this show, isn't it? Correct. Uh, YouTube is increasingly powerful. It's still defined very much by demographics, i.e., uh, once you get to a certain age, it seems that people tend not to use YouTube or think about using YouTube. That will YouTube. come. I think the older generations come to the party eventually. It's just getting over the fear it takes a bit more time. Yeah, maybe. It's just, it's just not part of their mindset, really, and they just haven't Facebook, been shown. Facebook wasn't for such a long time, and now, you know, there's some, some well, friends they, they, of mine whose who's 90-year-old grandmother is on Facebook, but that took a little bit of time. But that's for getting dragged get in the by the grandkids and the great-grandkids, great grandkids, so isn't YouTube it? So YouTube will do the same, you know, I, I, I I'd, I'd like to think so. I mean, YouTube is the second largest search engine on the planet. Uh, and it's a, it, it's an incredible resource just to find out information. So mm -hmm. when I got my first iPhone four years ago, I couldn't work out how to put the SIM card in because obviously I'm a bloke and I didn't read the instructions. <laughs> um, so I went onto YouTube and there was a video straight away showed me showed me what to do and uh, what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. So and uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, so I implore for anybody watching this um, if you're not using YouTube, then um, think of it as part of a resource um, for finding out information because more searches are done on YouTube than um, Yahoo and Bing combined. Yeah, but so. I think it comes up as well now. I mean, when you Google for anything, yes. YouTube videos come up to the top if of the you list use, now. If you use Google, yes, because of course YouTube is owned by Google. Yes, um, so that's one of the things. I mean, who, they, most do, they call it blended it. search. So yes, they, they put different search results in on the first page. But it's phenomenal how many videos are coming up in the top. Yes. The top rankings now. So the video seems to be the way forward, isn't it? Very much so. And that's, and that's either because people have been lucky or they've been smart. And uh, depending on your search term, it's possible to upload a, a video onto YouTube and get onto page one search results within an hour or two. That's, mm. 
It's that well, quick, isn't it? It's it, the it, quickest way. Absolutely. It, uh, it's certainly the quickest way to get onto page one of Google. Now, obviously, if it's a competitive search term, then that's unlikely to happen. But yes, it's perfectly possible to do that, much more so than just with a, a traditional website. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, a video, a video is a very powerful medium. You can see I've got my hands out there. That wasn't intentional. I'd talk with my yeah, hands. You, big, yeah. you get to see people's body language. You hear their tone of voice. You can see their face. You can see their eyes. You can see their movement. We are all programmed as a species to recognize all of that. And without that, um, you don't necessarily trust the communication that you're looking at so much. So, well, I'm going to I'm going to draw on a, on a term or a word that you focused on at the beginning, which was connect. And I think that everything, Facebook and Twitter, is all about connecting, feeling connected, but you're slightly removed because you it's can't see the person connect. always. And I think what video does and YouTube, but video specifically, allows people to connect much more authentically yes. in a sense like I, if I'm reading what you're saying I'm going to read it with my own there's still a disconnect thing. there though, isn't yeah. it because I can I can lean over and I can touch you and I can see you well there's no face. substitute for human connection but I think a lot of people and the, with the way of the internet is that there is that disconnect but YouTube brings you is probably or video rather is the most connected Definitely. That but people can get when they're disconnected if that makes sense with, without a doubt but there, there is a big gap there and I've always seen myself as being that uh, that bridge, if you like, between the online world and the real world. And the online world is where m many of us get our information today. And then it's how do you bridge that gap and how do you get people to move from connecting and talking online to actually bringing it into the real world. Um, how do you do that? Because that is like, <coughs> well, that's, you know, that's, that was always my fear with the internet. I always loved, I thought, wow, it's an amazing thing. But I've seen people who, ha who, for whatever reason, through pain and struggle that they've lived through in their own lives, hide behind the computer screen. They never have to truly expose themselves or truly connect. They feel very connected. That's not to say that the connection isn't authentic and genuine and real for them. Yep. But there's never that need to step out and actually face-to-face -face meet and, and, and connect with people. That was always my fear with the internet and social media and, and all the, the rest of it. So what do you do? How do you bring them from the internet and the research and that online stuff into the real world? Uh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, it, it depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So very often it might be uh, you just invite them along to an event that you're putting on and you encourage them to come to mm -hmm. uh, a group or uh, by looking at your connected networks, you reach out to somebody that is more bridging the real world and, and the offline and the online world and get them to go and speak to them possibly offline mm -hmm. um, or you directly reach out pick the phone up and talk good to old people. fashioned telephone yeah <laughs> good old fashioned telephone or maybe even send them a letter which uh, I, I as much as that I would really stop them in their tracks well <laughs> as much as I absolutely love digital it by it, it, it is about being a, more creative and this is creative in terms of just simple communication, really. Uh, Google are one of the largest direct mailers on the planet. They are. Now, um, you wouldn't necessarily recognize that or know that unless you've been told that, but they know that still more people are offline than online, certainly when it comes to businesses, and that's how they earn the vast majority of their revenue from advertising, which means that that's all about businesses. Well, I guess when you're marketing, <coughs> sorry to jump in, but when you're no. marketing yourself or your, your art or your business or whatever, you've got to reach your clients or the customer in many different ways. Online is one of those ways. But I suppose through the physical letters to the post is another way. And then there's that face-to-face -face contact that you were talking about, the actual... Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, again, it's about, it's about being creative and online because it's very easy to get. You can get, as long as you've got an internet access, um, that is your only barrier, really. So unless you're going to uh, sit in a cafe um, where someone else is paying for the uh, paying for the, the, the connection to the uh, the, yeah. the, in, the the internet, then there there is a small cost there. But other than that, that small cost, you can get yourself set up online for nothing. So you mm. can do a Facebook profile, a LinkedIn profile. You can set pages up on there or on Twitter or whatever. They're all free. Mm. I mean, there, you can you can you can set yourself up with a website today uh, for free. Um, Pretty much, but how so, do you translate that then? Sorry, so my, so my point is that the, the uh, to get connected and to start that process online 
is very easy, but because it is that easy, there is a huge amount of noise. Mm -hmm. And being able to cut through that noise is actually very, very difficult. So either you want to try and circumvent it by picking up the telephone or by sending them a letter or by... Sorry, so by noise you mean there's a lot of activity, it's busy. When you're online, yeah, it's, it's constant, you're getting this barrage of co contact emails come through all the time. Yeah, well, it, so, so if you look at Twitter, uh, the more followers, uh, the more people you follow, the, 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 the more information is going to be coming down on your feed. Yeah, my feed is ridiculous and there's and, very uh, few people that break through that. But that's at, exactly at my right point. Time. So how, how, does, how does somebody, how do you break through on that? And uh, that's about understanding how Twitter works. So that's either, either by using a few simple tools or by searching for information or by creating lists. You can create lists on Twitter so you can go into a list, um, which means that they, you might just have three or four people's feeds or organisations' feeds coming through. So it means that you can be a lot more specific in, in what you're looking at. So, and um, I, I took you off the track and what you were going to say was so valuable and I want to try and steer us back. Oh, you, no good. you were talking about um, how to cut through all the noise, all the traffic or whatever. So that's a really difficult process mm. uh, because we are all, there's seven billion people on the planet, we're all individual, we are all different and very few people have been shown how to use any of these tools properly and I've trained and coached lots of people on how to do things online. In, uh, most people haven't been shown how to use a computer properly either and I, 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 I have a quite chuckle to myself and I'm quite surprised at how inefficient people are at, at using the computer. I'm not claiming to be brilliant here because I, I still learn new things pretty much every day, certainly every week on how to use the computer. Um, but it was all shoved in front of us at some point, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And we've just sort of hacked our way through and, and got on with it. So there are lots and lots and lots of barriers there to actually get to that point of where, they, where people are getting the information from and then how do you rise above that? And that's just about being able to differentiate yourself as and best you can. And that's through sending a letter in the post, picking up the telephone. If, well, particularly if it's coming down to business or if it's coming down to fundraising or something, then yes, if you want to circumvent all of that noise online because everyone is trying to get your attention and unless you've all, unless people have already spotted you to actually break through that bubbling level of noise, if you think that as a, a simmering or a bubbling saucepan and actually trying to pop through that, that's incredibly difficult to do. I think you're right because if I think of Facebook, I'm on there a fair bit anyway to promote my own product and, and I keep getting people's stuff and it's only very few that I will actually go in and read what they've written. You see it all coming through, don't you? Yes, All the exactly. posts and everything, but as you say, some, someone has to stand out from the crowd or have made their mark or have had an impression on you in order for you to, like for now I've met you, so I will probably go and check out what else you have to say yes. when I see your feed, your, your feed or your... It's a face-to-face -face connection, you see. It's a real no world connection. No substitute, is there? No, there's not really at all. No, because it's now we've connected, that connection will it's stay. Really important. It's really absolutely critically important that you make that, uh, that, that first, that, that real world connection. I, I met someone earlier on today and we'd had a little bit of an, e I was introduced to, we'd had a little bit of an e email exchange uh, she's part of the transition movement for St Albans mm -hmm. and um, I sent her a connection request about a week ago on LinkedIn because um, I've got a little tool in my Gmail that shows me whether people are on LinkedIn or not mm -hmm. and um, as she said as we finished we finished the meeting oh, I've sent you a connection request and you haven't connected I'm interested in in your philosophy on that and she said well I will only c connect with people on LinkedIn if I've actually met them face to face. Oh, that's a very interesting... <coughs> now there's a whole variety of People, there's a whole variety of philosophies out there in terms of how people use LinkedIn and what they use it for and who they will and won't connect with because LinkedIn officially say that you should never connect with anyone that you don't know. I mean, I, it's a fascination for me because I've got a LinkedIn account. I had it ages ago. I don't use it properly because I don't really know how, but I've got something like seven or 800 connections who are endorsing me left, right and centre. Most cool. of them I do know from somewhere. Some of them are connections through connections, second or third or whatever that yep. means. I don't know what it's all about. And I'm sure I could be leveraging LinkedIn far more. I don't know whether it's impressive. I mean, compared to 30,000, my 800 is very minimal. But I'm not doing anything to get them. And I keep getting requests to connect, which, you know, once in a month or whatever, I'll go on and just get the funny little red dot off my phone. I'll, <laughs> go, I'll go and do it. But I really ought to leverage it more in business because a lot more people are talking about it's LinkedIn. much easier to do business on LinkedIn much easier because mm -hmm. people 
are focused on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, a, is a business a social networking um, platform that's been going for, I think they're in their 11th year now. Yeah, I mean, I know I get lots of requests. People are trying to sell to me a lot through LinkedIn, which I can't yes. stomach. It really so annoys me. You, you have to, yes. Yeah, so that, um, I, I don't get it quite so much now, actually. There was a time when I was, my inbox was, was full of people trying to spam me, particularly from, um, it seemed, India and Pakistan, but um, they're mm. very earnest in their in their endeavours, shall we say. Yes. Uh, that seems to have calmed down a little bit, and I don't know whether that's just me or whether that's... Maybe LinkedIn um, have uh, I don't done think something so. about it. I don't, uh, I don't, possibly. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. But um, people are much more focused on LinkedIn uh, in doing business, and it is certainly much easier as long as you understand a few basic techniques and a few basic principles and understand where people are on LinkedIn and you understand what it is that you're trying to sell or you're trying to promote, you will, certainly if it's business services, you will get much greater success on LinkedIn than anywhere else. So I shall go and try and block out some time to give it some attention and figure it out. I mean, well, you, I do you've made the valid point there and that's exactly what it's all about. It's not part, of, it's a habit. So if you're on Facebook, have, Facebook has become a habit for you. So mm, you're on there and you're doing it. So you'll get things out of it just because you're on there. But because you, um, you're in that you're in that transition phase, if you like, of not quite knowing what to do and not quite understanding it, so you're not really on there very much. It's like anything: the more you put mm. in, the more you get out. And I think with the shame of it, I've got so many connections. It would be a shame not to, to definitely connect, to actually properly connect with them. Yes. So in terms of our our viewers, and they're they're all um, not all of them, but I would imagine. I find every human being to be a creator in one way or another, but let's say somebody's an artist or a writer or a painter, musician, and they're in the arts, the creative arts, or they, they're writing a book or whatever it is. Yeah. What advice could you give them in terms of social media? Like, I know you touched on video. So, yes, um, it depends on uh, what market they're in and what their product is. Um, I would suggest that they go cross-platform, so that means that you need to be on all the major five platforms, so that's LinkedIn, Facebook, Google+, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, use those uh, together and depending on what your product is, then, and then obviously if you're uh, selling a book then you're going to probably want to be on Amazon and possibly using CreateSpace <coughs> uh, to get your book printed and then uh, MySpace if you're, if you're music obviously and then there's a whole second tier of social networking platforms that can uh, get your get your message out there to market. So I guess it's to look at what your media, your genre is or your medium and go and find the platforms. And don't do it alone. Don't support that. Are you, the only way social media works effectively is that you need to have likes, you need to have followers and you need other people talking about you. So you need to reach out and work to with... To network. Uh, to network and work with other people and find that mutual support because you will that helps you break through that noise level if you're just there on your own sending information out then 99 times out of 100 you just become part of the noise you need advocates don't you you need people to exactly. be shouting shouting about what you're doing in exactly. order for others to hear it because then it's not listen to me woo woo look what I'm doing you've got other people endorsing Very much so. you and i think that's much more powerful and and, and that's also about uh, landing into other people's networks and so you're 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 reaching out and you're going into places where people don't know who you are. So as an example, Creative Hearts, we're on the Creative Hearts show. I'm gonna, I mean, I have been tagging our guests because I'm excited to have met them and I wanted to, sh to let our viewers know and people on, on the Facebook group know what's coming in terms of the episodes and the, the amazing quality guests that we've had on the show. But yeah. the hope is that in support of what we're trying to do here, in terms of building the Creative Hearts community, that everyone who's been on the show will in turn shout about the show. That's what you mean, isn't it? Very much so. So if you go to your network, to your 30,000 LinkedIn people and go, well, look, I've been interviewed on Creative Hearts, they will then hopefully, some of them, a certain percentage, is it 2.5% or is that a figure from uh, direct mail? Who knows? Um, uh, that depends entirely on what you've shared. So if I share something on my, as a status update on LinkedIn, I will almost certainly get a couple of hundred views okay. and that can go anywhere up to, I think uh, 5,000-ish was probably the most popular one I've had. 
So your um, episode of Creative Hearts, presumably you'll want to share that with your network. Yes. And when and that's out, yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing to remember there, of course, is don't just share it once because certainly, well, LinkedIn is a, is a global platform and so you're, you're, going, you're cutting across all the time zones there and people have different habits about when they look at their social media, they might choose to do it first thing in the morning, last thing at night, at lunchtime, when they're sitting on the train, when they're sitting on the toilet, wherever it is, whatever it is they happen to bath. be doing, yeah. in the bath. I'm always amazed that I can be bathing at any time of the middle of the night, I can be tweeting and I get followers. I'm like, Isn't, are people not asleep? But then of course it's international, isn't it? It's, tw it's 24 seven. So some other crazy person who's Start starting their day in the morning is uh, exactly is around and has received. My, it's fantastic. The reach is vast, which, which which is really exciting, and that's what sucked me in in the first place. Uh, I, I um, lived in a couple of places around the world and met and uh, lived in different places and met different people, and the the opportunity of being able to connect and talk with people in different parts of the planet um, keeps me going, keeps me um, energized uh. and. It's a way of finding out what's going on at a street level without having to re rely on mainstream media. Which I mean, I hear you because for me, the connection with, from one person to another is what feeds me. That's what energizes me. That's why I can sit here all day and interview pe person after person because this interaction is what gives me energy. Finding out what drives you and what inspires you and what excites you. So I may not remember everybody's names when I bump into them wherever I meet them, but I'll always have connected to something about their essence, and that's what I take with them. There's no substitute for that. It's just no, powerful, not at all. powerful stuff. And, 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 and I guess that's what you've got to come across with in your social media, don't you? You've got to, your essence has to come through, that your, your unique spark has to Very much way, so, and, 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 to, and to be honest. So, that, that, so for a lot of people, social media is quite challenging because uh, they're not quite sure who they are as an individual, and therefore mm. they're worried about um, what they're going to say and, and how they're going to be perceived. So that's a, that's a journey in itself. So mm. actually getting comfortable with using social media very much is a, is, a, is a journey of personal discovery in terms of understanding who you are and how, and, and how you're perceived and what you think about and what you say and uh, what, pe what people think of you. But I mean, some of the most <coughs> ridiculous tweets get the most phenomenal responses and that's something that I just, you know, some rubbish, who cares what you had for breakfast? You know, yeah, I mean, and yet people do seem to like that sort of thing. So that depends entirely on who you are. So um, I'm really not I, personally. I'm not interested in celebrity culture at all. So I don't follow celebrities. Mm -hmm. that has got no interest in that whatsoever. But we live in a world that is driven quite a lot. Our mainstream media is driven hugely by celebrity mm. culture, isn't so it? So who do so you follow? Sorry, to, I'm more interested in who you do follow then. Uh, I uh, um, on my Ivor Kellogg. Uh, Twitter channel. I'm following a whole variety of people around the world. Um, I had a bit of a bit of a spate of um, getting followers and following people from the Middle East um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of um, small and mid-sized business people uh, in America, Australia, India. It's, it's that's a, it's who you follow. And yes, and that, that's re that's a reciprocal thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are two distinct schools of thought. Well, there's three distinct schools of thought on Twitter, really. Um, there's the, the, uh, the arrogant ones, um, and I'm, I'll say that carefully, but um, it's true. There's, there's this whole internet marketing philosophy that you have to dominate your market and you want to gain lots of followers, but you don't follow them back, so they're only going to follow you because you're sharing valuable, useful information. Um, I'm a little bit more sharing if you like uh, i like to follow people and i like them to follow me back so there's a reciprocal mm -hmm. arrangement that's that to me is more human and giving the, the whole digital experience more of a human feel um <clears throat> so lots of celebrities clearly um they don't follow that many people back do they mm -hmm. they um, they've got pos potentially millions of followers and they might follow i don't know ten thousand five thousand whatever not that many people then there's a reciprocal like me, and then there's those people that use it as a personal news feed almost, so they choose to not follow many people anyway because they don't want their stream to be too busy. They want to feel in control of it and 
want to be able to see every tweet as it comes in. But that would be where lists would come in, as you mentioned before. Is yes, that, so that's, that to that's help filter all the, the noise because I can't. I don't ever go and watch. Every now and again, I'll go and look for something, but I much prefer to put in a keyword and then search that way because it's just too manic. Yeah, that, well, that's that's I can't that, bear that, it. that's a re that's a reasonable way of doing it, um, unless you know that uh, a particular person or channel on Twitter generally give good information um, and if they gave that information six or eight hours ago and you're searching for something that's quite popular there'll be a load more tweets there because it's the most recent tweet going backwards in time so it may well be that the, f the channel that you're interested in might not show up in that mm -hmm. search or you're going to have to scroll for hours until you get to it so yeah that's exactly that's where lists can be really really right. useful and really valuable and of course that, that yeah they're, they're the three core routes to uh, how people use Twitter and I'm not saying there's any right or wrong answer there. Uh, the, the, the one thing I would say, because people, most people still don't really get Twitter. Twitter is where news breaks. That's where yeah. the news breaks and where news is happening. So if people are still quite negative about the whole concept of what Twitter is all about, recognise that that is where the news story that you see on your uh, news channel, be it Sky, BBC, ITV, Al Jazeera, wherever, that news story would have broken almost certainly. It's now it, coming through the Twitter feeds it will, now. It, yeah. it will get found on Twitter first and then there'll be a media rush to get the camera crew there and get the, get the team there to actually show us what's happening. Okay. And you mentioned a little bit about networking. I know you're quite an avid networker. Well, social networking is all about... That's, it, that's what it says it is, isn't it? Now, so social networking is a term that's been hijacked a little bit, really, because that's what we do as a species. That's what's made us the dominant species on the planet. Well, they used to trade, isn't it? That's almost going back to the trading days, isn't well, it? Well, before, uh, going, going back even before that, that's um, going back to hunter-gatherer days. Um, mm. we, we started clumping together um, in groups, and there's a, there's a number called the Dunbar number, which is approximately 150 people. Uh, there's been quite a lot of research around that, which says that as a group of people, once you get to that sort of size, we struggle to deal with a number of people bigger than that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that's partly, I think, why people tend not to want to have or don't have more than 150 friends on Facebook or 150 followers on Twitter. I think the I forget what the average number is. I used to know that number on Facebook, but it doesn't interest me I anymore. I suppose the numbers are changing as it's... Uh, no, I think the numbers have been quite static there. I think the average number of, of friends on Facebook is around about 150 or 200. Then I'm doing all right. I could, I could be wrong <laughs> on that because I've looked at that number for a couple of years because it, it's a meaningless number, really. Um, I guess we know when you're using it for business, it becomes very different. I'm obsessed with increasing the numbers, but mainly because I'm trying to reach more people to get my message out there. Yes. And I guess for a lot of our viewers, it's going to be the same thing. They need to have that in their mind that, that in order to, to share what they've created and in order to, to sell their products, their music, their books, etc., etc., they need to reach more people. And Absolutely. they need to get more f friends. is a bit different on Facebook because you need to, you, you know, that, that's a bit different. But on a page, you want like, it's all about the likes you, and the yes. followers and the well, connections. E e and even Facebook pages these days are. Uh, uh, I would say are a lot less powerful because Facebook need to monetize now that they've floated and floated for a huge amount of money. They've got to uh, show a return to the shareholders. Yeah, they've got a shop now, don't they? And Shopping. so very few posts that you put out on your Facebook page now show in somebody's news stream, in someone's news feed, unless you're paying to promote them. Mm. So a Facebook page today isn't that efficient in actually getting your message to market. You, you, you might like this, and maybe you can explain it to me, right? I got a delivery yesterday. My audio program arrived. I literally put a photograph of the envelope. I put my, my name. I, thank God, had the sense to, to scratch up my address because I was, took one photo and went, oh, my God, I don't want everyone to have my street address down to the postcode. Best I fixed that. So I took another picture, scratched it all out, and I posted it up yesterday. My reach, which I'm told is now one of the most important things i nearly fell over i, could, I stared at it one thousand and something what does that mean and is that good well my other things reach like 20 80 sometimes 100 so the average is around 200 for a post this was in the thousands what well, was it about this envelope <laughs> that, that made all the difference uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 impossible to say without without actually doing a little bit of an analysis there of um of who those people were but Clearly, people liked it, so that was 
that was that was the chain. That that's the the chain effect of. So of the people that I know that saw it liked it enough that they shared yeah, it. Yeah, well. and it went out to different Thousands networks, and different networks, and different networks, and different networks. I was yes. so like, oh my goodness, I can reach a lot of people. Who knew? And then I had some post the other week. All of a sudden, out of the blue, my post reach were. They were around three, four, five hundred, and then suddenly two thousand two hundred and something. And of course, I didn't go and check which one it was because I didn't know until I got my my page kind but of. He, but here's the key. And I was like, which one was it? What did I do differently that all of a sudden I reached thousands? Here's of people? the killer question, though. So your reach increased, but did that directly correlate to uh, the phone ringing more? And have you sold anything more, or have you talked to any more people? No, and that's the whole thing. Is what the the real essence of it is I'm building up momentum in order to sell a product and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of our viewers that yes. the musicians want to sell their music the authors want to sell their books the artists want to sell their works of art the you know everybody's you know doing it to, to potentially earn money that's a lot of you know very few of us can afford to do it just for the love yes in a sense so therefore how do you monetize that potential because it's a marketing tool isn't it Absolutely. how can I get them to then buy? Um, well, that, again, that depends entirely on your product and your service. So you need to be targeted. Um, you need to recognise what people, what why people are buying. So I don't know. Um, so depending on what your your book is about or your music is all about. So what genre is that? Do you know what what people are buying already? Make sure you do uh, plenty of research to understand your marketplace and see what other people are doing that you think are very similar to you see what techniques they're using, what is it that they're using to promote that is getting their message out there. So uh, the reason that uh, Facebook bought Instagram 18 months ago for a billion dollars without them making a cent in profit was that pictures are incredibly powerful. And again, I forget the numbers, but uh, some crazy amount of photos get shared on Facebook on a daily mm, basis. Huge. People, people like pictures on Facebook and they physically put, they click the like button, don't they? Mm. Um, so make sure that you're putting out pictures um, that relate to your, your product or service. Um, and whether you want to be a bit quirky and a bit funny or you want to be serious or you want to have one of those inspirational quotes, I think we'll possibly we're getting to overload point on inspirational quotes. I don't know. There's the, um, people still seem to be liking them and sharing them. Oh, I hope so. Um, my genre. <laughs> <laughs> and then make sure you've got a video with it as well. Yeah. Um, make sure you've got a very easy buying path, a very easy buying journey. Um, and you take people on a journey. People are very unlikely to go and buy your book immediately unless you're recognised in their world. So you've got to... People Court them in a way, isn't it? Like you're courting. You're yes, of. exactly. So you're, you're taking people on that journey. So people want to know more about you and different people want to know different things. So what extra information are you sharing around your product or your service that is going to encourage people and take people on that journey? So they're taking more and more steps. So eventually they take enough steps to say, yeah, I'm ready to buy now, or I want to buy now. It's amazing. You've given us so much food for thought here, and I think that anyone who's watching this is going to probably have to replay it over and over to capture. I hope they've got their notebooks out. I should have said that at the beginning of the, the episode. Pen well, and paper at the ready, there's a lot coming, but I didn't know what was coming because we were kind of just going... But that's the beauty of YouTube. You can pause it and take it back, can't you? That's true. You can play it over and over again. Play it over and over again. Take it with you on your phone if you need uh, to. Exactly. Um, what I wanted to ask you as well, I know that you mentor. So is this the kind of stuff that you would work with the people that you're mentoring, your, your mentees? Would you go yes, through this uh, with them or is it a different type of mentoring that you do? No, um, I, I, work, I work with businesses and I work with individuals to... Um, uh, help them take their product to market. Um, I've been doing that for a number of years now. Uh, I originally um, I uh, qualified as an NLP practitioner, neuro linguistic programming practitioner. I did that um, to understand more about language and recognise the different types of mindsets that there are out there to be able to create better quality copy. Mm. Um, but part of the outcome of that process is that it makes it more interesting for me as a mentor to support people. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have quite a particular style. I'm quite uh, quite to the point in terms of what I do and, and how I do things and like to uh, help people get there as quickly as they possibly can. Um, <clears throat> so yes, that's that's part of what I do. And, I, um, I, and I've sort of morphed that into the whole community thing, if you like, and that's mm -hmm. about trying to get people to recognise that there are other people out there and different types of mindset out there and 
try and people get people to understand how that all fits together. Is that the inspiration behind Community Connect? Yeah, very much so. That mm -hmm. sort of um, uh, that came from a couple of business ideas that I've had recently, which um, I'm just in the process of putting together uh, mm -hmm. and getting ready to take to market, which are all about helping. Um, small businesses, particularly retail and high street type businesses, mm -hmm. better connect with their customers and help them be more sustainable in what they do. So that's about connecting with uh, with their mobile phones when they're coming into into their shops and their premises, and uh, helping the buyer on the journey and helping the seller recognise what that journey is so that the two meet. Wow, I mean you've got a lot on the go, don't you? You do? Do you the ever sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do. Not. I do sleep. What, three uh, hours a day, five hours. Yeah, I'm not quite as bad as Maggie Thatcher. No, I do more than three hours a day. Well, that varies actually. Some days um, I don't do much at all, and other I don't know days. How you don't? I mean, there's so much going on, and I know for me, just to manage my my social media, of which I'm very leading to one social media outlet, and maybe a bit of tweets here and there. It's it's that's quite time consuming. So to be able to juggle all of your your networking and the follow ups that that requires, and then you've got your social media and then your mentoring and the community projects. It's it's quite amazing, and that's I think what's inspiring me is to see. I everyone always looks at me and goes, "Oh, you're so busy with all these different businesses and endeavors and projects and pro things that you're creating. How do you do it?" And actually, I look at you and I'm thinking, "Oh my goodness, I'm doing one." tiny the, little percentage of the, what you The do. networking itself, it becomes self-fulfilling. The, the, the more you reach out and the more you make real world human connections like this, then the more that feeds and grows. So and we're differentiating, we're talking now about face-to-face -face physical, real world. real world networking, going yes. to networking groups exactly, um, and meeting face-to-face -face people. Then there's the social media element of that. And there's the, yeah, so that I suppose LinkedIn is where you do a lot of networking, but you're doing it on the social media side of it. Yes, so yeah, yeah. Link, so LinkedIn is is about uh, reaching out and connecting, and whether that's uh, I'm doing that for local projects, or whether I'm doing that particularly for a client, or whether I'm showing other people how to do it. Yes. Great. And I have another question, which is: Do you pick the people that you mentor, or do they find you and come and chase you? For uh, it? That how cuts both it? ways. Um, if I if I meet someone face to face and. I like them or I think that I can help them in a particular way then I'll certainly approach them about that. Equally um, I get referred people and people come to me and say either I'm trying to do this or I want to do this, can you help me and we'll have a conversation to see whether or not um, we, work, we can work together and I can actually help them achieve what they want to achieve. And I guess for anybody watching is there, is there a fee that is involved in, in you being somebody's mentor or how does it work? Yes, I mean uh, Again, that depends entirely on what people want me to do, whether they want me to work with them um, over, a, over a series of uh, days, weeks, months, mm -hmm. and therefore they want me for uh, certain time slots, or whether they want me to work on a particular project, or whether they just want a day or a couple of days of intensive coaching and mentoring and um, helping them on their journey and then picking it up after that. Or I might refer them to um, a number of other people that I work with that have possibly created some, because obviously uh, time is my most valuable asset and therefore my time um, uh, needs to be paid for. Mm. There are sometimes more cost effective ways for people to go and do a, a training program online and then maybe I support them with that so they need less of my time, but yes, absolutely. Did you always get paid to mentor? Is it Does it depend no, on, your, on your, your prerogative, I suppose? It depends on my prerogative. Um, I do, so I, mentioned uh, a project that I'm going to be launching soon, which is time banking. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, quite prepared to work um, on a swap basis with people um, and depending on what they've got to offer and what I'm looking for at the time. So yes, is Well, I think in the cur current economy and, and the pace of life that we're all existing at, I think there's a lot to be said for that, that barter and trade where you can get a job done. Very much so. Um, it's, it's it frees up your time, it, it gives you you know, it's not a financial strain on people, people who haven't got it, who've got a great idea. It's all about value. Um, and a great day. ethic and they can't get, bring it to, to life. So that's a good way for, to give people a, a bit of a chance on a levelled playing field. Particularly when it comes to, uh, you're at that very early stage uh, and um, ideas are incredibly delicate, incredibly mm. delicate and, be, and can be quashed, it can be squashed and crushed. And um, 
destroyed um, in the wrong hands. So yeah, it's about finding the right people to be able to work with and recognizing that maybe it isn't all about the money in the beginning, it's about helping people develop that idea and taking it to a point where it can be fulfilled and can become sustainable and actually can blossom and grow into something in the real world rather than stand in somebody's head and that's that's a very delicate process. That must be really fulfilling though when you see somebody's idea Absolutely. manifest. You know? Absolutely. I know the response to my audio program arriving in the post was overwhelming and the people who've supported me in various stages along the way um, have been celebrating with me. I mean it's not even available to uh, there's no way to buy it just yet unless anybody you know but that's what you're talking about I've had s the support along the way to help bring it to life is kind of what you're offering and that's the fulfillment must be immense for you yes and that, 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 that. and that's that, that's a two-way thing so uh, yeah the, the fulfillment is yeah, um, and that sense of uh, well there's a sense of responsibility there but the sense of um, purpose and just sharing someone's joy and someone's pleasure, uh, that knowing that you've been part of that process. But do you do that unconditionally or are you hoping, I mean this is a bit of a slightly deeper question, but do you hope for some sort of, um, I don't know, like a kickback or a, or, or a, and a mention or is there, or is it an unconditional offer of... of that again depends on how we choose to work together. Mm. That really depends on... Because there's also that whole karmic, um, that yes. come back in the energy. What goes that, around comes exactly. around. Exactly, and it doesn't have to be from that person directly in that way to know that you'll be... That depends entirely on the project, so that mm -hmm. depends entirely on the idea, what they want to achieve and um, what they're doing with it and where they're leading with the project in terms of how I support and give my time. So I've supported charities in the past. Uh, sometimes they've either had funding where they could pay me or they've... Uh, I've got other things out of the projects that have paid for my time. Exactly, because it's not always that the rewards come not necessarily as money, it comes in other ways and it can be a feeling, a sense of worth and that you're actually contributing, which in itself is very, very valuable. Yes, exactly. And then of course there's the money side of it or there's the opening doors, there's a lot of different ways and I mean I'm, I'm somebody who, who likes to do things just because um, it just feels good. You know, it makes me sleep better at night. I feel proud of who I am because I can do these sorts of things. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. But at the end of the day, you're also running a business, aren't you? Well, I was going to say, look, I, I, I enjoy all of that. And, and um, that um, certainly motivates me and gets me out of bed in the morning. But you still got to pay the bills at the end of the day. You can't take that good feeling down to Sainsbury's and say, can I have a loaf of bread, please? They don't, quite, they don't quite understand that, do they? No, so. they don't. <laughs> so that's good. It's all about monetizing things at the end of the day. Not yes. all about it, but it needs to be factored in along the way. Exactly. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers before? Um, oh, wow. Well, uh, um, so look, the, uh, for me, the creative process is, a very, is very delicate. It's, um, clearly, it's about finding the right people to work with. I would say um, we... I been shown hundreds, thousands of, of ideas over the years. Don't be too precious with your idea. It's important that you're prepared to share. Clearly you need to find the right people to share that with, so that's about building relationships first. Don't play your cards too close to your chest. And don't be surprised that um, your idea possibly has already been thought of and has already been tried. That doesn't mean to say that your idea is wrong or bad or broken or can't be turned into something that can work. Um, it might be the right time for it now. So I've had plenty of failures over the years and um, I've learned a huge amount out of those failures. And I think probably with some of the failures that I've had in more recent years, the time I was, I think I was too, too far ahead of the game, if you like. The market wasn't ready for what I was doing. I'd like to think that the market is more ready now, maybe it isn't, but until you get out there, you put your head above the parapet and you actually do something about it, you're never going to know. So you've got to keep going, I think, isn't well, it? Get, you know. Keep going, but the, I think the real point I'm trying to make there is that don't leave that idea in your mind. Be prepared to share it. So at the start of that is obviously sharing it and talking about it with people and finding the right people that you're comfortable with that, that you think can bring uh, the right skills to the table and recognise that you're probably going to need a variety of different skill sets to make it happen. Uh, probably one of the biggest
problems or problems possibly the wrong word but one of the biggest pitfalls I see people fall into is that they will tend to get other people involved in a project that are similar to them mm -hmm. and that means that you've just um, perpetuating the same you, habits you, well you've mul yeah you've multiplied the skill sets that you have around you but the chances are then there's probably a number of skill sets that you're going to need to make things happen and to make, uh, ensure its success that aren't there so it either means it's going to be doomed for, to failure to, from the start because you've got some core skills that are missing or you're making it really bloody difficult for yourself. So in other words, if you're going to collaborate, choose the people that you collaborate with who are going to add more value, add other skills to yes. the table so uh, that you can take things further forward, I suppose. If you've never been in that, in that position before, because that's a leadership role, if you've never been in that position before in your life where you've had to take a step back and you need to start choosing about what these different things are, then um, make sure you go and find somebody that does have some experience there or go and do lots of reading there's so much information um, out there on the internet go and watch some videos uh, download some freebies go and buy some books and understand what it is that you need as, as the relevant skills to help you get to where you need to get to I tell you what i would buy the Ivor killock book and i would <laughs> tune into the channel and i would watch your dvds i hope that you are in your plan is is perhaps Perhaps I've shied like away that. from that actually. Just, Why? It, just there's only a certain number of hours in the day, as you've already as you've already highlighted. And my bigger vision of um, connecting things locally does take up a lot of that time, and therefore I've put that to one side. The, the, there will be a book one day. There'll be a book one day. I'm not quite sure when. I'll have to follow you so that I can know when it's about to come. Or you can come back on the show and tell everybody. Would love to. Because I'm sure that all the creative people out there and our other viewers as well would love to, to learn more from you. And a book is a great way to do that. But um, I do wish you every success. It's been such a pleasure to have you here today. It's and been great sharing. Yeah, it's been amazing. And um, my mind's racing and I'm kind of now almost itching to get back onto social media to figure out <laughs> what I can do better. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. What are, so your hopes and your plans for the future before we sign off completely is probably your community project by the sounds of it. Well, that, yeah, that's, qu that's quite multifaceted. But yes, it's about helping people. Uh, and in fact, the one thing I didn't mention at the beginning, we want, uh, uh, we've got a project to resurrect the carnival in St Albans. In fact, mm -hmm. the person I met earlier on today She's lived in St Albans for eight or nine years now. She didn't even know St Albans had a carnival. So um, uh, there's a, a, a plea out there to everybody watching that we're looking to bring people on board. We've got a committee uh, going. Um, I see the carnival as a way of not only bringing lots of fun and lots of joy to the district. And St Albans Carnival in its heyday in the, in the mid late nineties before it um, drifted away because um, the organisers um, started losing volunteers and therefore they didn't have the infrastructure to keep it going, was the second largest carnival in the country behind Notting Hill. Wow. And um, so not only do I see it as a way, a sense of bringing a sense of joy and harmony and fun to the district, it's a way of showcasing all the amazing creativity that we have in the district and we do have a huge amount of creativity in the district. And also it's a way of bringing economic sustainability and bringing a, a more stable sense of economic sustainability to the district because it's a way of connecting the districts again in different ways. And the outlying areas of the district of St Albans, which includes all the villages, not only just looking at St Albans and Harmden, but um, the, the whole area. Lovely. So that's my focus. That's what I'd like people to remember in the short term. And please come and find me. <laughs> I'm sure they will. How can they find you? On Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn well, um, or Yes, uh, they, can, they can email me. So that's Iva at communityconnect.club. That's one of the new domains that has recently come out. So Ivor at communityconnect.club. Mm -hmm. Or they can just type my name into Google. So Iva Kellogg can find me. On and you're happy for people to keep contact you? And yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very open on those platforms. My mobile number's out there. 
Um, and you'll be surprised. People, have, that's an interesting side point. I know you want to want to wrap up. <laughs> I could talk to you all week. Yes, actually. I know you, I I know you want to wrap up. I was warned. Our producer said, "Get ready. You're going to not want to stop this one." And I, and I can see where he was coming from. People are, people are very nervous about putting their mobile number out there, but it doesn't get anywhere near as many calls as you would. Think. I know mine's. No, I'd like it to ring maybe once. It does buzz, but it's not for yes. The, not, all, not, all not anything that my, I need. <laughs> my phone isn't constantly off the hook by people trying to sell me something because my mobile number's out there. Um, the world, the world isn't quite that crazy, and I think that's an important point to get that's people to recognise that um, if you put your contact details out there, yeah, okay, you are going to attract a little bit of spam, but you also attract an awful lot of good stuff as well, and as long as the good stuff outweighs the bad, then why not? Well, you want to be found, and we want our creative endeavours to be discovered, Yes. and we want to share it with the world, so if you don't put your contact details or some way for people to reach you, how do you ever expect them to find you and to connect? Precisely. And it is all about connection at the end of the day from exactly. what you've been saying. It's been an absolute delight. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And um, I'm going to keep talking to you after the show as well. <laughs> 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 right, everyone, you've been watching another episode of Creative Hearts. We've had a fa fascinating um, session today with Ivor Kellogg. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care.